Hi friends, if you like my videos, subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates. Thank you. So in this video, let us discuss about oxidation of fatty acids. And in this video, I am explaining you about introduction part, the steps involved in this process and also the energetics of the oxidation of fatty acid. So coming to the introduction part, normally what is meant by fatty acids, you know about the fatty acids, right? Normally the structure of the fatty acid includes alkyl chain and if that alkyl chain consists of carboxylic group, then it can be considered as a fatty acid. Okay, and normally this oxidation of fatty acid can be explained by beta oxidation and this beta oxidation is defined as the oxidation of fatty acid which occurs at the beta carbon that involves the removal of two carbon fragment and here the two carbon fragment is nothing but acetyl CoA and these three lines of definition can be explained later because if you see the reaction then only you can understand this definition I will explain you it later and next this oxidation of fatty acid uh, was discovered by Franz Noop normally what, what did he do? he took a dog he, he and he fed a dog with the food and the dog excreted waste material and he put that waste material under the presence of the microscope and he examined that uh, waste material in such a way that he examined this oxidation of fatty acids through that waste material only in that way he discovered this oxidation of fatty acid and coming to this oxidation of fatty acid the enzymes which are involved in this oxidation of fatty acids was discovered in 1950 by uh, three main scientists called Leninger, Kennedy and Libarilot and normally this oxidation of fatty acids it occurs in cytoplasm as well as the mitochondria and next i have said you that this oxidation of fatty acids occurs in the step process like in it occurs in three steps first step is activation of fatty acid in even cytoplasm transport of active fatty acid activated fatty acid to mitochondria and third step is beta oxidation process uh, process which occurs in the mitochondrial matrix and the proper is nothing but the place place is nothing but uh, which occurs in the mitochondrial matrix and here here the here the you know reactions takes place in this beta oxidation i am going to explain you the step by step reactions in this okay so now let us discuss about the first step what is the first step activation of fatty acid so how the fatty acid will get activated with the help of an enzyme known as acetyl coa synthase or else thiokinase uh, either by this both of the enzyme one of the enzyme will be utilized either it may be this one or else this one and if one of the enzyme will be utilized then only the activation of the fatty acid takes place so this fatty acid, fat activation of fatty acid will be it will require ATP coenzyme as well as the magnesium plus two ions I mean NG plus two ions so if you see the reaction of this activation of fatty acid so normally this is the fatty acid and how it will get activated by utilizing an enzyme known as fatty acid coesynthase or thiokinase either both of the enzyme will be used okay and next it requires ATP and when it requires ATP ATP will be generated out along with inorganic phosphate and next coenzyme will be used coenzyme will be used as well as the magnesium ions also will be used right so here ATP coenzyme as well as the magnesium ions will be used with the help of an enzyme known as fatty acid coa synthase and it will get converted to fatty acid coa and here he, we have mentioned here coa because it consists of coa group here where the alcohol where the alcohol group OH group will be liberated out and forms this uh, coa group uh, coenzyme group because we added coenzyme here right so in this way the activation of fatty acid takes place so when this fatty acid will get activated then it forms fatty acid coa in simple words to say and come into the second step transport of activated fatty acid to mitochondria so here there is a mechanism left over and this i am going to explain you this mechanism if you see here properly and normally this place is cytosol place and this is called as outer membrane outer mitochondrial membrane and this is inner mitochondrial membrane and this space is mitochondria okay we know that mitochondria consists of membrane right and that membrane will be divided two parts outer, outer mitochondrial membrane and inner mitochondrial membrane and this is the cytosol part uh, which is which doesn't include this mitochondria but it is close to each other okay and normally the activation of fatty acids takes place right so when the activation of fatty acids takes place then what happens the activation of fatty acid takes place in such a way that it forms acetyl coa fatty acetyl coa so this is the fatty acetyl coa and this fatty acetyl coa will get reacted with carnitine and here carnitine plays a major role and this carnitine is a protein and when the carnitine is used then this coenzyme will get liberated out like this so when this coenzyme will get liberated out then what happens instead of this instead of this coenzyme then what happens carnitine will be used and then carnitine will be attached with in the place of that coenzyme and that structure is called as and that product which has been formed is called as fatty acyl carnitine and remember here i have written only acyl carnitine and wherever i have written acyl you have to include fatty acyl also because in just small words i have written like this acyl carnitine or as fatty acyl carnitine right 
and now that fatty acid carnitine has been formed in the cytosol region right and now this fatty acid carnitine which has been formed will enter into the outer uh, will enter through the mito outer mitochondrial membrane with the help of carrier proteins and this carrier protein helps to uh, transport this uh, transport this carnitine i mean acyl carnitine into the mitochondrial membrane and from this outer mitochondrial membrane it enters into the inner mitochondrial membrane and here trans transport proteins plays a major role in such a way that to transport the proteins i mean here carnitine protein has been pre present over here right and that protein will be enter into the mitochondria with the help of this transport proteins only and when this uh, finally what happens is that this fatty acyl carnitine will enter into the mitochondrial region so if you see here this is the mitochondrial region right finally it enters into the mitochondrial region and now here another mechanism takes place what happens here is that this fatty acyl carnitine what what does it do it will get converted again into back fatty acyl coa it will get converted back again into fatty acyl coa right and then what happens here here this carnitine will be formed because instead of the here what we have done instead of the instead of the coenzyme here carnitine will play a major role when this carnitine will be utilized then what happens this coenzyme will get liberated out so when this coenzyme will get liberated out then what did i say this carnitine will join to the structure and forms acyl carnitine right and here this is a total reverse process which occurs in this mitochondria so if you see here this is the acyl carnitine which has been transported from the cytosol and the reverse process takes place where that's nothing but the fatty acyl coa will be formed in such a way that the carnitine will be released out here carnitine will be used and here carnitine will be released out so instead of the carnitine in what happens this coenzyme which has been used uh, will play a major role to the formation of the structure called acyl coa or as fatty acyl coa and here carnitine has been formed right and that carnitine which has been formed will again goes back into the cytosol through inner mitochondrial membrane and outer mitochondrial membrane and then finally enters into the cytosol and that carnitine which has been transported from the mitochondria to cytosol will be again utilized by the acyl coa i mean fatty acyl coa where this fatty acyl coa will get converted to acyl carnitine and then again the total cycle will get repeated so this is the second step called transport of activated fatty acid to mitochondria right so here this is the activated fatty acid right so normally the fatty acid will get activated and form fatty acyl coa so that is the activation process and this is the activated fatty acid right and that activated fatty acid will enter into the mitochondria right and from the mitochondria what happens the carnitine which will be released out will be used again uh, by this cytos uh, by this uh, fatty acyl coa in the cytosol okay this is the second step of the transport of activated fatty acid to mitochondria and here the two important things which you have to remember is enzymes carnitine acyl transferase 1 and carnitine acyl transferase 2 so here this carnitine acyl transferase 1 enzyme will be used in this cytosol and this carnitine acyl transferase 2 is the enzyme which will be used in this mitochondria which converts acyl carnitine to fatty acyl coa and this carnitine acyl transferase 1 will convert acyl coa to fatty acyl carnitine i mean fatty acyl coa to fatty acyl carnitine okay so this is about the second step coming to the third step so coming to the third step friends beta oxidation proper which occurs in the mitochondrial matrix and here uh, steps we takes place i mean reactions some of the reaction mechanism takes place i am going to explain these reactions okay like this and coming to the reactions fatty acid it begins with the fatty acid right and this is the structure of fatty acid and this fatty acid undergoes activation process and forms fatty acyl coa and this is the step which i have explained in the first in the first step only right and for your better explanation i have written again here and here we know that coenzyme will be used and fatty acyl coa synthesis or thi or another enzyme called thiokinase will be used and atp will be used and along with the atp coenzyme will be used like this i have said you and along with the coenzyme magnesium plus 2 ions will also be used and forms fatty acyl coa and this is the activation process but i have written here for your better understanding purpose and here fatty acyl coa which has been formed will enter into the transport system right which i explained you in the second step and then here fatty acyl coa which is present in the transport system carnitine transport system what does it do now if you see here with the help of an enzyme known as acyl coa dehydrogenase that's nothing but dehydrogenase is nothing but removal of hydrogens right and here fadv energy will be used and uh, and it gets liberated out with fadh2 h2 two hydrogens has been liberated out now let us see this difference in the structures r r ch2 ch2 ch ch ch2 ch2 ch 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 so here two hydrogens will be liberated out right like this by utilizing of energy called fad and fadh2 will get liberated out 
and H2 means nothing but two hydrogens. From where these two hydrogens will get liberated out from these two structures, okay? From these two carbon atoms, two hydrogens will get liberated out, and remaining structure will be same. And the product which has been formed in this uh, in this reaction is called trans enoyl CoA, okay? By utilizing an enzyme known as acyl CoA dehydrogenase. And now this trans enoyl CoA. Now here it undergoes hydration process. What is meant by hydration? Water molecule will be utilized. Dehydration is nothing but water molecule will be lost, right? Hydration is nothing but water molecule will be utilized. And here, what happens? Let us see the structural difference here again. RCH2 C H double bond CH. So here I have used H2O, right? One OH molecule and will be present, and one H molecule also be present. And that OH molecule will be attached to this carbon. And the H I have been represented towards downside, and this is the OH group which will be represented towards upside. And one of the hydrogen molecule will be presented over here, right? And that hydrogen will get bonded over to this carbon atom and form CH2. Okay, and remaining structure will be same, and this is called as beta hydroacyl CoA. Next, this beta hydroacyl CoA will form beta ketoacyl CoA. With the help of an enzyme known as beta hydroxy acyl CoA dehydrogenase, and again, if you see here, dehydrogenase enzyme has been utilized over here, so two hydrogen atoms will get again uh, released out. So if you see here again in the structural difference, NAD and NAD energy is uh, utilized, and in such a way, the two hydrogens will get liberated out. And here, the two hydrogens is nothing but one of the hydrogen from here and another hydrogen from this OH group. So these two of the hydrogens will get released out, and it forms keto group. Hence, the name indicates keto beta keto acyl CoA. So this is the enzyme which has been utilized. Next, this beta keto acyl CoA under the presence of enzyme known as thiolase, and in this. A thiolase is nothing but utilization of coenzyme, right? So when this coenzyme has been utilized, then what happens is that uh, there is a partial partial differentiation in this uh, in this beta keto acyl CoA. That is nothing but uh, the, this will be different and this will be different. The, it will get division in simple words to say. So this RCH2 C double bond O and here this coenzyme which has been uh, used here will get joined in this. Will get attached to this part. And here CH3 is nothing but this bond which has been which has been presented over here uh, will get combined with the CH2 in such a way that it forms CH3 and then the remaining structure will be presented over as it is. So here two products has been formed, right? Acetyl CoA and another one is propionyl CoA. Instead of uh, I mean instead of R, if you if you keep CH3 then it becomes propionyl CoA. So here this will be the products which will be formed. So this is about the third step process. That's nothing but beta oxidation proper which takes place in the mitochondrial matrix. So now let us discuss about this energetics of oxidation of fatty acids. And normally I have took the best example as palmitic acid. We know that palmitic acid is common saturated fatty acid, and this palmitic acid will be present in animals, uh, plants as well as in the microorganisms also. Okay, and normally this palmitic acid is 16 carbon compound. Okay, and when this palmitic acid undergoes beta oxidation, two carbons will be released in each of the step. So here, if you see here, see the 16 carbon compound is nothing but palmitic acid, and each of the step includes. I have I have written here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? And all of this includes the beta oxidation process. So when one of one step of the beta oxidation takes place, two carbons will be released. So here only one step has been takes in place. So here. Two carbon will be released and one acetyl CoA will also be released. So along with the acetyl CoA, uh, FADS2 and NADH also will be released, but only the one mole. Okay, and here only one oxidation beta oxidation process takes place. And again another beta oxidation process takes place. That is the second second step of the beta oxidation. Then what happens? The 14 carbon compound which has been present over here will get converted into 12 carbon compound because two carbons has been released out for with one beta oxidation process. So here, in that way, one of the beta oxidation process takes place and finally forms two carbon compound of this palmitic acid. It will get reduced. It will get this palmitic acid, which is a 16 carbon compound, will get reduced to two carbon compound by this beta oxidation steps. So how many beta oxidation steps has been taken place here? Seven beta oxidation step taken place. But one of the blunder thing which you have to remember here is that. In the seventh step, normally uh, up to the six steps, only one acetyl CoA will be released outright. So in this in the seventh step, what you have to remember is that. Two molecules of acetyl CoA will be released out only in the seventh step, okay? But not in the up to the sixth step. Only one acetyl CoA will be released, and two carbons will be released out, and one molecule of FADH and one molecule of NADH also will be released out. And here, uh, e of course, two carbon will be released out, one FADH2 molecule will be released out, and another one molecule of NADH2 molecule will also be released out. But the acetyl CoA will be released in the two molecules, 
okay two molecules of the acetyl coa will be released out only in the seventh step of the beta oxidation and finally it get re it reduced to two carbon compound okay and normally i have said you here seven cycles takes place right uh, seven cycles takes place and within that seven cycles what happens eight acetyl coa will be released out because in the last step two acetyl coa has been released out. so total if you count here one two three four five six seven eight two acetyl coa has been released out okay and next seven fads2 one two three four five six seven seven fads2 molecules will be released out and seven nads2 molecules will also be released out okay and now if you see here let us see the energetic process energetic process nothing but how much of energy has been liberated out in the form of atp so if you see here uh, these are the uh, these are the products which has been formed from the palmitic acid and if you see the, in the case this acetyl coa one of the acetyl coa will releases eight atp molecules sorry 12 atp molecules and this eight acetyl coa into 12 that's nothing but 12 atp molecules right and 8 into 12 is nothing but totally 96 ATP molecules will get liberated about will will get liberated by 8 acetyl coa so here one nadh molecule will liberate 3 atp molecules so here we have used 7 nadh molecules right so 7 into 3 21 atp molecules and here one fads2 will release us 2 atp molecules but we have written here 7 fads2 right and this 7 into 2 is equals to 14 ATP molecules and now if you see here totally 131 ATP molecules we has been formed here and within that 131 ATP molecules two ATP molecules has been used for the activation process because if you previously explained you in the activation of fatty acids ATP will be used over here right if you see here ATP will be used so how many ATP molecules will be used two two ATP molecules will be used that's what I explained you there that's what I explained you here. Two ATP molecules will be used in the activation process. So totally how many ATP molecules will get generated out? Totally 129 ATP molecules finally will get generated out. So this is about the energetics of the oxidation of fatty acids. I have took just example of palmitic acid. You can take any other uh, palmitic acid. Not only the palmitic acid, you can take any other fatty acid also. Okay. So this is about beta oxidation fatty acid so in this video what did i explain you introduction part i explained you three steps i have explained you that's nothing but activation transportation and the beta oxidation steps and next coming to the energetics uh, with by taking an example of palmitic acid okay so this is about the uh, oxidation of fatty acids and in this video uh, i explained you about the total topic right and this notes for this total topic will be given in the whatsapp group which i have given a slide before only right so thank you for watching this video guys if you like this video please subscribe my channel don't forget to subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates thank you